I mean, Danny Hurley can be a villain, but I don't think people – Can he? I mean, he yells at the rest a lot, but right. he's not really a villain. No, no, no. Off off the court, actually, he's – He's as entertaining as almost any coach in the country. You guys, you guys are you guys are not friends anymore, though. So no, we're good now. We we made up. We made he, up. You shouldn't be good. You were just taking pot shots at him on this podcast. But I told him I've known him for 20, 25 years. Okay, and I I literally told him, and I I do mean this sincerely. I think he needed somebody to come out and and, and say something. People have said something to him privately, and I don't listen. I'm not taking credit for for because he's still not mellow. He's not mellow. You, you changed him, huh? You changed Danny Hurley. No, I didn't. Nobody's going to change Danny Hurley. But <laughs> what, what somebody can do is when you come out publicly and you say something like I did, which was, you know, he needs to change. He can't hurt his team by being a lunatic on the sidelines. Maybe it helps him think about it because, again, the public perception, right? It's one thing, you, you know, he hurt. He did hurt his team in that in that one game where he picked up the technical. I'm not sure they were going to win the game anyway, um, but he does. He he needs to, especially now, Rob, there's a lot on the line. Dan Hurley can't be picking up tees. You know, there'll be some refs that know Dan Hurley. Okay. There'll be some refs that, that Jeff Anderson, I don't know if he'll officiate either of UConn's games. He officiated the one in Albany, the first one against Iona, which was insane to me that you would, uh, you would give Jeffrey Anderson the game. But you're probably going to get guys that never have to see Dan Hurley again in the yeah. Final Four. So they could easily have a quick trigger and be like, you know what? I'm not I don't know. They're, the names in the Final – I saw the list came out of the officials refing it, and it's pretty much the the who's who yes. you know, from a name perspective. So I, I think he will see some of these guys. Uh, what, what did you think about some of the calls that we had that sh- swung game, the, the Creighton foul? Yeah. I Got, mean – you, all these it was a foul, Rob. Saying, Rob. It was a it foul. was a foul. I agree. I agree. So uh, you got to call it. Like he had his hand on his hip. It. I don't know how much it affected. And I think. Not. And I think he's dislodging him. I, I do think. I think that it's not like he's just touching him. He, there's some force behind it. But there is the argument of like you can't call it there. I, I don't believe in that. Like there's, unless it's like so egregious, that's a really hard thing to say for the officials because. You know, when does it become the subjective time of I can't call right. a foul anymore? Right. right. That's it, not it, fair to them. Two, like two minutes and one second. I, you know, like, yeah. like exactly. what are we doing here? I mean, they do use Agreed. their common sense with it. They do. I mean, I've talked to the officials about yeah, it. But some of that's been taken away from them. It used to be, and I'll call it like the officials justice, yeah. where if me and you were going for a loose ball end of the game, and I've got like four fouls, and let's say – Yep. I foul you, and it goes out of bounds. They might just say, "All right, it's Goodman's ball." Yep. No, no foul. So I stay in the game, but the possession stays the same. Yep. Well, now if it's under two minutes, they go and review that, and we've had that in the NCAA tournament here, where they say, "Oh, wow, yeah, he just took his arm off, but Jeff was the last person to touch it." So they can't do that anymore. They have to call it a foul. I don't know. I, I just think that that's a really tough spot. I also thought the, it's been talked about a decent amount. The blockout foul on Brock Cunningham of O'Meara was a real game-changing play. They initially ruled it it was O'Meara's fifth foul, and they were going to go the other way. And then they changed the call and said, no, it's going to be a foul on Brock Cunningham. O'Meara stays in the game, and he shoots two free throws, which he made both. So I, I, I didn't love that call. I got to say. Here's my, here's my thing. And I, I have no idea what the rule book says for this. If I'm blocking you out and I initially blocked you out and then you jump, that is, I know over the back, I think I read is not a call in college. But if I'm getting blocked out, why don't I just jump? Right. And then I'll get undercut and then it's a foul on, on you. Yeah. Whereas if, if he's already left his feet and Brock Cunningham slides in, then I think that is a foul on Brock Cunningham. But if he's already boxing out and he's doing what Locked every right. Brock, Brock yeah. had him, he had him blocked out. I agree. He? Yes, he's boxing out and he's trying to root him out, which is what you should do. Yeah. And the Omir just is so athletic that even though he's got contact going back, he just jumps up. But they call it a foul for undercutting him. Well, he was blocking him out first. So I, I don't. Agree with you. I don't I know agree. what the rule is, and I don't know how it reads. But that's what the rule should be. Yeah. If he's blocking out already and you jump up, it's yeah. an over the back. 
And if, if it's the other way where he's left his feet and he comes in, all right, he undercut him, followed Brock Cunningham. But that, that was a big, big call that swung the game at the end. Yeah, no, no doubt. Listen, again, people complain about refs all the time. Like, if a team loses, if you watch, look on Twitter, it is literally all the refs fault, no matter it's what. It's a bloodbath. No one ever loses the game anymore. It's, it's no, always, it's always the, the refs fault. You know, how many times you see, oh, ref show, or it's, the refs are jobbing I mean, us I'm, or whatever. I'm, I mean, it's I'm with it. If it's a game at Kansas or a game at Duke, I will. I will. I'm with it that they're going to get. They're going to get calls. Otherwise, I feel like if for the most part, especially these days, there's no Coach K. There's no Roy. There, you know, I think it balances itself out. The calls. Now, yes, there might have been one at the end that was more significant that we're putting more attention to. But over the course of a game, Rob, I will say this. It generally balances itself out. Again, unless you you have a coach that either has a, a ton of juice, a Hall of Famer might get a few more calls, or a coach who's a lunatic might get a few less calls. That's it. That's it. To me, again. Yeah, I mean, think about it, though. The, the whole mindset of berating the refs all game and then expecting that same official who is also a human, if yes. it's a 50-50 call, where do you think it's going to go? Right, and I'm not saying that they're mindfully doing that, but I do think that's a part of this. When you just constantly yell at these guys and berate them and and do crazy stuff, what do you think is going to happen on a call where it's all right? They could go either way. Who am I going with? Hey, Rob, on Monday night, think about this: either Brian Dutcher or Dusty May is going to uh, coach for a national title. Isn't that crazy? crazy? I, I've yeah. been around. I, I think that is, that is a cool part of this Final Four, though, that yeah. you've got you're going to have a national champion that's going to be a first time yes. national championship coach. Um, you know, Larinaga has been there. They yeah. who they lose to in the Final Four at George Mason? Uh, they beat UConn and then they lost. They got blown out by shoot. What year was that? Oh five. Oh six. Oh six. Oh six. I was in a six. I'm looking at who they who they lost to. You caught me early in the morning here. You made yeah, me. You know. They lost to Florida. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's I remember that. They got they got hit pretty hard by them. Um, Seventy three fifty eight. It was never a game. It was never. A there game. was no shame in losing to the Corey Brewer, Joe Noah led, Al Horford led Florida Gators. 